Hello and welcome to Just Ride Bikes. I'm David and today's video is all around a topic of whether suspension on a gravel bike is a step too far or the next evolutionary step for these exciting new breed of bikes. To find out, I've been testing for the last couple of months the redshift stem and suspension seat post to see whether a bit of suspension is a good thing or not. Now, the topic of suspension on a gravel bike is a very relevant one right now. Hot off the news of SRAM and RockShock last week launching their first suspension fork, but not the first in the market. We've already got a Candale suspension fork and Fox and MRP will sell you one as well. And there's even the Niner full suspension drop bar gravel bike. And then dialing back a few steps, we have bikes like the Specialized Diverge, with the Future Shock up front, and then the BMC unrestricted with the Elastomer soft tail, and also the Trek Checkpoint, and quite a few other bikes that try and offer some suspension while not being a true suspension bike. Now, all those require you buy an expensive new fork or a complete new frame. The beauty of the Redshift system with a stem and a seat post is that you can retrofit it to any frame you currently have. So much cheaper, much more accessible way to add suspension to your current gravel bike. But what are they like to live with? Do they work? What are the downsides? Well, let's dive in and take a closer look. And it's based on several months of riding, my local trails here, and some bike packing adventures as well. So let's dive in. Let's start up front with the Redshift suspension stem, which has been around for a few years now, and quite a few people have already invested in the stem, and you might have one already. Let me know down below if you do. Now, suspension stems aren't a new idea, and I'm sure some of you are rushing down to the comment section right now to remind me of the Gervin Flex stems from the 90s. Now, the idea, the concept of a suspension stem isn't inherently a bad one, it's just back in the 90s, it wasn't the right fit for the way mountain biking was evolving. Suspension forks were a much better fit for the riding these bikes were been designed for and catered for, and also held back by technology and manufacturing and materials at the time. But fast forward 20 plus years, and with the latest manufacturing and materials understanding, the concept has been brought right up to date and works pretty well, it has to be said. Now, using this over the last few months as I have, I've been really impressed with how it delivers a smoother ride over rough gravel, tree roots, and down rocky descents. I was initially worried that it might feel vague and flimsy, but that hasn't been the issue at all. I've been barreling down some quite rough tracks, twatting into roots and rocks, and it doesn't feel flimsy or flexy at all. When you're sprinting out of a saddle, there's no side to side flex that I can detect, nothing to really take away from the sheer comfort this stem offers. So it's a very rudimentary design, aluminum stem and two small elastomers inside, which you can change based on your rider weight. You can tune whether it's softer or firmer and offers up to 20 millimeters of up and down movement. You can't turn it on and off like you can with a suspension fork or the specialized Diverge Future Shock system with a dial on the top. It's always on and always active. Any concerns around it bobbing on smoother fire road or road or climbing out of saddle or sprinting proved unfounded in my testing. Now I do have the firm elastomers fitted to try and dial out the movement so it only really works on bigger impacts. So it's not bobbing around excessively and it feels fairly normal and having it active all the time is a good thing because even on the road here in the Cotswolds, they're pretty rough, strewn with gravel and potholes. When you get off road onto your favorite gravel tracks and roots and rocks and other impacts or corrugated grass or whatever it is, the movement it offers is just supreme. It offers so much more comfort and smoothness than a fixed rigid stem. What that does is reduce fatigue on longer rides. My upper body feels less beaten up when I'm doing a long ride, especially apparent on a bike packing adventure when you're riding day in, day out and the fatigue can really build up in your upper body, especially with the extra weight on a bike as well. So it helps to reduce the, the soreness, the tiredness you get when you're riding off-road. And while it's not suspension as such, it does give me a bit more control because it calms the front of the bike down. And that's especially apparent on high speed, rough sections where normally the front of the bike would be bouncing around, bucking around on every small impact. 
the stem just smooths it out, just calms it down and just makes it all a little bit less hairy and sketchy and makes it a calmer, nicer experience. So that's all the good stuff then. What about the bad stuff? Well, the most obvious points that come to mind are the price, it's not cheap, but it's cheaper than buying a new bike or that new RockShox suspension fork. Then there's the looks, not the prettiest looking stem, although this new version does look much better than the original. It's a bit chunkier than normal stem, but for me, I don't mind the looks because of the functionality the performance it offers counteracts the way it looks. And then of course, there's the extra weight over a normal stem. Yes, it's heavier, but again, the performance it offers counteracts the extra weight compared to a normal stem. So for me, the looks and the weight aren't an issue because the performance it offers is just simply fantastic. The stem comes in a wide range of lengths, 80 up to 120 millimeters. This is 100. And you can change it from minus six to plus six, which requires removing the elastomers, uh, doing a bit of fiddling aside, but it's a really easy five minute job. And now you can get a one and a quarter inch version for your Giant Overdrive 2 or your Canyon Gristles. So that's a good thing as well. One other thing that's worth bearing in mind and worth pointing out is that compared to a telescopic suspension fork or the Specialized Fuse Shock, where the handlebars go up and down in the same range of movement, this tilts the handlebars. So the handlebars rotate forward when they go down. And I had to slightly rotate the handlebars back just to bring the hoods back up. So a small adjustment required to get around that slight quirk of the way the stem rotates around the steering tube. The other small thing worth bearing in mind is when you go bike packing and fit a bar bag to the handlebar, is that you allow enough room between the top of the tire and the bottom of the bag. So when you hit a bump and the handlebar fully compresses, the tire doesn't contact the bag. But apart from those small details, no major downsides at all. I know that many people have bought the Redshift stem and the stem alone, but I've been fortunate to test the shock stop suspension seat post as well. And in my mind, it makes a perfect combination and I wouldn't choose one or the other, I'd have both. I know it's a more expensive uh, proposition, but both work together extremely well. Now, like suspension stems, suspension seat posts are nothing new, and we had them back in the 90s with early mountain bikes as well. And to be honest with you, I'm surprised there aren't more on modern gravel bikes. We have flexible carbon seat posts, like a Canyon VCLS split seat post, and a few other designs, but suspension seat posts make a lot of sense. There's a minimal weight penalty, small costs increase, but it's cheaper than buying a whole new bike, like a full suspension bike, keeps the bike simple, doesn't add too much complexity, but offers a lot more seated comfort. And that's great when you're riding off-road or going bike packing, riding a long way with all your luggage on the bike. So it's a very simple design, aluminium construction, 27.2 millimeter diameter, and a very simple parallelogram design offering up to 35 millimeters of suspension. Got a small removal cover to protect the internals there. And inside is a simple spring and a preload collar. And you can add an optional spring inside the main spring to tune it for your body weight. So I have a small bit of sag when I sit in the bike. It compresses just a little bit, but I've tuned it so it only works on the bigger impacts and the really corrugated washboard gravel or big roots and rocks. And that suits my preference. So I'm getting suspension, but only getting it when I really need it. It hugely increases comfort when you're riding for an hour or six hours with luggage, when you're riding over rough gravel and roots and rocks and bridle ways and everything else you might encounter on a British gravel ride. It offers so much more comfort, just removes all that feedback that comes through the back of the frame straight into your lower back, just reduces the fatigue you get on a long ride. It also enables you on very rough sections where you might normally have to stand up to use your legs as suspension to isolate you from all the bumps that the bike's going over, to keep in the saddle, to keep pedaling, keep the power on, keep the speed up, and pedal through rough sections where normally you might have to stand up because it's too bumpy. The range of suspension movement is really, really smooth, and like a stem, you don't really notice it working. At first, you do notice it because it's very different to a normal fixed seat post, but after one ride, you get used to it straight away. In my opinion, it offers more comfort than other systems on the market, like the Canyon Grizzle with a VC LS split seat post, the Trek Checkpoint with the ice speed decoupler, and also the BMC Unrestricted with the Softail Elastomer setup. Now, downsides are 
that is much, much heavier than a normal seat post. But again, like a stem, which is also heavier than a normal stem, the performance, the comfort it offers, offsets the weight penalty quite a bit. And if you want comfort, you're not gonna worry about weight, so the weight isn't a factor for me. It might be for you, but if it is, then you'll be all right with a normal seat post and just deal with the harshness, the rough impacts that come through a fixed seat post. You can use it for bike packing, as I did for three days doing the King Afro's Way. The only tip I would offer you is to wrap some tape around the post, because as you can see, my bag has worn away the black anodizing on the post. Um, so wrap it with tape and you'll be just fine. So let me wrap up my thoughts on the suspension stem and seat post from Redshift and my thoughts on suspension on gravel bikes more generally. And I think we all know it'll be a hot topic for debate over the next few years with everybody having their opinion, the pros and cons. And ultimately, whether the future of gravel bikes is suspension, forks and other products, it's down to you guys whether you embrace it, whether you go out there and buy it with your hard earned cash. But for a lot of people, it will be a step too far. Adding suspension to a gravel bike gets away from their simplicity and the purity that they offer. I'm not really being the best bike on a road or off-road, but being the best compromise everywhere and letting you do everything with one bike. But on the other hand, I know there'll be many people who love the idea of suspension on gravel bikes for the extra speed it offers and the extra comfort it offers, which I found to be a really appealing aspect of this combo here. For me personally, I don't think I'm sold on the idea of a full suspension gravel bike like the Niner. I think you're better off with an actual mountain bike. And suspension forks, I'm not yet decided. I need to try a few more before I make up my mind on those. But I do like the idea of a bit of suspension, like the Future Shock from Specialized and the Soft Tail from BMC or the Redshift stem and seat post combo I'll be using here. Because the comfort it offers is just fantastic. It is amazing how smooth this bike is compared to a normal stem and seat post. It's so good, in fact, I'm not in any rush to take them off and put them in the box, send them back and put normal stuff back on. And when I ride Avid gravel bikes, when I test Avid gravel bikes, I'm relieved and happy to get back on this bike because the comfort they offer is just fantastic without going all the way to suspension complexity. Just a bit of smoothness, but not making it too smooth and not really taking away the fun of riding a bike like this off-road in the woods and the open gravel roads like we have here. Yes, the weight penalty is a factor and the cost you can't ignore, but cheaper than buying a new bike, that's for sure. So for me, I'm absolutely sold on a Redshift suspension stem and seat post. And if you ask me which I would choose between the stem and the seat post, I would say get both. They both work really well. If I could only have one, I'd probably go for the seat post over the stem, but I think you need both to get the most benefit out of this setup. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Redshift suspension stem and seat post and my thoughts on suspension on gravel bikes. And I'm sure there'll be some more videos coming very soon as that RockShot suspension fork arrives for testing very soon. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel for more on this exciting topic. And do let me know what you think down below by leaving a comment. Are you for suspension on gravel bikes or against suspension on gravel bikes? I'd love to hear your thoughts as always. But that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.